a lone patch of cilia beat in the dark, deep inside the lung. At this scale, the cilia seem all alone, but the lung is teeming with life. Above the cilia and the mucus, the human immune system fights to help rid the body of unwelcome, merciless germs and dust. It's a losing battle when the cilia don't work together. The cilia push the mucus upward so you can swallow the bad stuff and send it to your gut to be destroyed. One cilium alone can't do the job, but as a team, they stand a chance to clear out the dangerous, dirty microbial life forms before they cause infections. A battle is won every day inside our lungs. The heroic cilia emerge victorious. But how do these mighty nanomachines move in the first place? To answer this question, we must journey to where no human has ever set foot before, beneath the cell membrane. The cell membrane encapsulates the entire cell and drapes over each cilium. To build our cilium, we start with a support structure. Like the internal steel framework that holds up a skyscraper, groups of microtubules, tiny long tubes, create the cilium's frame. Each cilium needs a single pair of microtubules in the center and nine sets of doublet microtubules in an outer ring to stand strong. Next, we must connect the support structure to make it sturdy and stable. We need more proteins to get the job done and link these parts together. The inner sheath protects the central microtubule pair. These two are fused closely by fibrous bridges, like rungs on a ladder. Radial spokes connect the outer tubules to central ones, like bicycle spokes connect the axle to the wheel. Now we have a structure for our nano machine, but we still need parts to make him move. While our bodies use muscles to move our skeleton, cells use proteins to move theirs. Dynings are powerful protein motors that pull and slide microtubule doublets against one another. Coupled with binding nexin, microtubule sliding is converted to bending, creating wiggly, beating cilia. Let's take a closer look at how these mighty dynings move microtubules. Dynings extend from one doublet and pull themselves up the other, the way kids pull themselves across the monkey bars on a playground. It's no wonder cilia dynings are called dining arms. A dining arm reaches down and grabs the neighbor microtubule, dragging the doublet down with it. When it cannot stretch any further, it lets go and returns to its starting position. Success! The durable dining has slid the doublet against its neighbor. Our bodies control 600 muscles using our brain and nerves, but each one of our cilia controls 4,000 dynings just to make one beat. With 4,000 of these protein motors working 24-7, climbing and releasing, climbing and releasing. It is amazing that the whole cilium beats steadily. What our cilia abound in brawn, they lack in intelligence. Without a brain, how is a cilium supposed to create a wavy beat alongside his teammates? We think that when the cilium is bending in one direction, half of the dynings are pulling while the other half are letting go. For the cilium to bend the other way, they have to switch jobs. How does this happen? How do they know what each is doing? We don't know. Can you figure it out? We've seen how little we know about how one of our cilium beats, but what causes all the cilia to work together? Again, we don't know. It may just be easier for each of them to pulse together than to go against the team. The rhythmic motion of the mucus itself, propelled by those same beating cilia, may cause the cilia to get in step with one another and push the mucus forward like a wave on the ocean. However cilia coordinate, once these nanomachines join forces, they ceaselessly beat, moving the mucus upward out of the lungs where it is swallowed down the throat. Your lungs are clear for another day.